Today we're going to talk about a classic dynamic programming problem, the longest common subsequence, or LCS for short. So what exactly is the longest common subsequence? Let's take a look at an example. Imagine you have two strings. One is A, B, C, B, D, A, B. The other is B, D, C, A, B, A. What we're looking for is a sequence of characters that appears in both strings in the same order, but not necessarily consecutively. And among all possible such sequences, we want the longest one. For instance, B, C, B, A is one valid common subsequence with a length of four. All those characters appear in both strings and in the same relative order. Note that the answer isn't always unique. For example, B, D, A, B is also a valid solution. Now don't underestimate this problem. It has real-world applications in areas like text comparison, version control, and DNA sequence analysis. It's also a favorite in technical interviews at top tech companies. So how do we solve this problem? The most common approach is using dynamic programming. We'll build a 2D table called a DP table. The number of rows is the length of the first string plus one, and the number of columns is the length of the second string plus one. The top row and the leftmost column are filled with zeros to represent empty substrings. Each cell, DPIJ in the table, represents the length of the longest common subsequence between the first I characters of the first string and the first J characters of the second string. Now let's talk about how to fill the table. We go row by row, left to right, top to bottom. At each cell, we compare the two characters from the strings at positions I minus one and J minus one. If they match, we take the value from the top left diagonal cell and add one. That means we found a new matching character. If they don't match, we take the maximum value from the cell above and the cell to the left. That means we skip the current character and carry forward the best result so far. Following these rules, we fill in the entire table. The value in the bottom right corner will be the length of the longest common subsequence between the two strings. Let's walk through the table filling process. The top row and leftmost column are already set to zero, so we can skip them. We start from the first character in the first string, which is A. The first cell compares A and B. They don't match, and both the top and left cells are zero, so we put zero here. Next, A and D, not a match, so again zero. Then A and C, still not a match, we put zero. Now A and A, that's a match. The diagonal cell is zero, plus one, gives us one. Next, A and B, not equal, so we take the larger of the top and left, which is one. Finally, A and A, they match again. Diagonal is zero, plus one, gives one. And that's the first row done. Every step follows the same rules. If the characters match, take the top left plus one. If not, take the max of top and left. Now the second row, which is for the character B from the first string. Again, we go from left to right. First, B and B, they match. Top left is zero, plus one, so we fill in one. Next, B and D, not equal. Max of top, zero, and left, one, is one. Then B and C, not a match, fill one. Next, B and A, still not equal, fill one. Then B and B, another match. Diagonal is one, plus one, gives two. Finally, B and A, not a match. Max of left, two and top, one, is two. That's the second row complete, same logic all the way through. We continue row by row, column by column, until the whole table is filled. When we reach the bottom right corner, the value is four. That means the length of the longest common subsequence between these two strings is four. So how do we reconstruct the actual LCS sequence from this table? We can backtrack from the bottom right corner of the DP table. At each step, we compare the two characters that the current cell corresponds to. If they don't match, we check which of the top or left cells has the larger value and move in that direction. If the top and left values are equal, it means there are multiple valid paths. In other words, multiple possible LCS sequences. And you can choose either direction. If the characters match, that means the character is part of the LCS. So we add it to the result and move diagonally up and to the left. 
We continue this process until we reach the top left corner of the table. Once done, we'll have the full longest common subsequence. Finally, let's look at a Python implementation. It uses standard 2D dynamic programming to fill the table and also includes a backtracking step to recover the LCS itself. The overall time complexity is O M times N, where M and N are the lengths of the two strings. If you're interested, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at the code. All right, that's all for the longest common subsequence problem. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, or share it with a friend who's preparing for coding interviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.